welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It's been yet another challenging week on the electricity front, with the lack of money for diesel raising the spectre of more intense load shedding, as ESCOM prepares to shut Kuburg Unit 1 for extended maintenance. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these issues. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM's diesel warning started to bite this week. Yes, you know, Eskom announced that they had spent 12 billion with, uh, on diesel, which was way above what they budgeted for the year, and basically entered a, a period where they said they're no longer going to buy for the rest of the financial year, which runs until April, uh, well, end of March next year. So diesel, as we know, has been used extensively to cover the gaps where, uh, where there's been enough capacity in the system or energy in the system to get us through without load shedding. And it's been important to lowering the intensity, even though it's been a very intense year, lowering the stages of load shedding. So it's been used really, really, very intensively right through the year. So without diesel, uh, it's, uh, it's really going to be difficult to keep the stages of load shedding uh, sort of below that stage three. And really there's a, uh, Eskim has outlined that its base case is 13,000 megawatts of unplanned outages at any one time and really they're not keeping within that threshold at all. You know, for most of the period during the summer period, which is also when they start ramping up the planned maintenance, they've been well above that and I think they've been averaging over 15,000 megawatts and therefore uh, they've used diesel to reduce the stages uh, of load shedding but having to resort more and more to load shedding and we know very intensive levels. Anything above stage three really, really bites in South Africa. And then this week they just have not been burning diesel until they got some reprieve in the form of uh, some largesse from another state's owned company, uh, Petro SA, which was able to provide it with some diesel and they've been able to therefore lower the intensity of load shedding over peak hours, not massively, but from stage four to stage three. So it is biting and it's going to continue to bite until there's some sort of solution found because we are going to depend heavily on diesel. The maintenance program is not going to bring the recovery uh, that we need immediately. Um, it will, I think there's a view that they can recover 6,000 megawatts over the next two years from the coal fleet. But it's not any, th that's not going to happen anytime soon. And in fact, we're entering this very intense period now of maintenance uh, across the coal fleet. As summer demand uh, decreases, uh, the, the maintenance ramps up. And therefore, we are always vulnerable to load shedding in summer. Without a funding solution, 2023 could be worse. Yes, and uh, there's no real s uh, sign of what that solution could be. You know. Um, every year or every few years, but uh, lately it's been every year, Eskom makes a big application for diesel to the National Energy Regulator of South Africa. And every time it is being rebuffed and uh, uh, the regulator says it's not a prudent expenditure and therefore it really becomes a big hole in Eskom's finances. And I think the new board has come to the, the decision uh, rightly or wrongly, that they just can't do this anymore. It's uh, it's uh, getting to a point where that f that financial hole is so large that it can't be closed, and that unless there's a cost recovery mechanism built in, it would be actually irresponsible to continue spending this amount on diesel. But on the other hand, the cost of unserved energy is massive, so load shedding cost to the economy is massive, and that's why Eskom has been arguing every time. Look. It's better for us to spend this money on diesel and for us to be allowed to recover it through either directly through the, the tariff that's approved when they ask for it or through the regulatory clearing account. But they've never really been able to convince the regulator and there's a lot of cheers <laughs> every time the regulator denies Eskom. But it's biting. That's really the only long-term solution. Some sort of cost recovery. Is it a prudent expense? Is it better than load shedding? If it is then they need to be able to co cover that cost. Otherwise, the only other option is to turn to the taxpayer because government doesn't want these high levels of um, load shedding. Uh, we they know what the economic cost is. They know what the political cost is uh, and the societal cost. So 
the taxpayer then has to be turned to, and that's what we're seeing currently. Firstly, this largesse from probably the Central Energy Fund, uh, which has some reserves, and that's really the state stepping in to help another state company. But what, what beyond that? And uh, I suppose up until from now until the end of April, if the board holds the line, which is probably what they need to do from a fiduciary duty type of perspective, then it's going to be the taxpayer. And we really know we're bailing out Eskom in terms of its unsustainable debt, billions every year. Are we going to be, as a taxpayer, going to be footing this bill? Or does the regulator, when it considers currently there's an application before it, and Eskom has outlined a fairly intensive use of the open cycle gas turbines because of the fall in the energy availability factor, is the regulator going to blink and then we're going to have very high tariff increases. <laughs> so it's a, we're in a really, really difficult spot as a country. But definitely the cost of unserved energy is much higher than burning diesel. And this, this is inbuilt capacity. We're not putting in power ships into, uh, into ports and you know, finding gas for that. It actually is available and it is at a lower cost than the cost of unserved energy. But it is at a massive cost. And really the long-term remedy is really about building as much new, cheaper energy uh, to inject cheaper energy into the system, mostly through solar and wind, and where we can recover this really poorly maintained coal fleet. And I think there is some sort of effort going in there, to, as I said earlier, to recover that 6,000 megawatts. But really for the next two years, we are in a, a conundrum around what we do about diesel. And I think we do need to find a solution. One analyst is also arguing that ESCOM should abandon the Kuburg life extension. Why? It's, a, it's controversial. The Kuburg life extension itself is controversial, but it's been on the cards for very, very many years. In fact, this started sort of 2010. Uh, the budget was announced for the Kuburg life extension at 20 billion rand. We know that's a, that's a false figure because that figure is going to have escalated massively. We don't know what the the real cost is, but multiples of that. Uh, so it's been on the cards. The contracts for the main components that needed to be replaced, which is the steam generators, there's six of them across the two units. Those contracts were placed with the French many, many years ago. Then there have been major problems with actually delivery on that, that, those contracts. Uh, eventually, manufacturing was shifted to China where those steam generators were eventually manufactured, and most of them have come into South Africa. Uh, it, so it's been a very difficult contract. It was supposed to all finish in 2018, and then there would be no issue. There, I think Eskom would be in the phase of getting the, the license that they need to continue operating be beyond July 2024, which is when the Kuburg license uh, expires and when Kuburg officially is supposed to retire. So they sort of really deep into this but if you look at this issue of cost of unserved energy and that's what we were talking about earlier that really the cost of unserved energy if you use the 87 rand uh, that NERSA uses and what is used in the integrated resource plan and you take S Kuburg unit 1 off which is going to happen now on the 8th of December for 200 or 180 to 200 days that's a, a very long time and then immediately follow it with unit 2 which is really a catch-up uh, extended maintenance because they were supposed to do the steam generator replacement already this year, but they had to abandon that plan because Eskom didn't have the facilities, the containment facilities in place to hold the old steam generators and the other contaminated components. Uh, if you take that, we're going to have a whole year without it, you know, 920 megawatts in the system. That's an immediate additional stage of load shedding. And this analyst, Clyde Madison, has worked out that it's, uh, the economic cost to South Africa of unserved energy, because of Kuburg only, uh, is going to be more than half a trillion rand. So it's, it's massive. It's something that the National Energy Crisis Committee should have already had its head around. It doesn't, obviously. It, likewise, it should have had its head around how are we going to manage this diesel during this interim where we don't have the coal fleets operating and we don't have the new wind and solar mainly, energy coming to the system, they don't. So we're in this sort of uh, gray area, 
and it's it's a serious thing to consider for Eskom. You know, as they're doing with diesel at the moment, their fiduciary duty is to make sure that the finances are are, are right at the state-owned company, but it has huge economic costs by doing the the right thing. What is the right thing with Kuberg? And he's written a letter, Clyde uh, Mallinson, to the Eskom board and raised this issue. Is it conscionable <laughs> to allow for an economic cost of what he's worked out, 600 billion rand, by p um, pressing ahead with what was probably about a 60 billion Kuberg life extension? So it's a big issue and one that has come, I agree, very late in the day, uh, but it's one that uh, should be putting the, the Energy Crisis Committee, who've been very opaque since they were launched in July, on high alert, and one that I think we need some answers, not only from Eskom, but also from that committee. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.